Hello everyone, welcome to another Sunday live session. I'm here from the Earthworks Hub studio. Coming to you live, I have a co-host with me, which is my dog Zeus. However, he's a little bit camera shy, he's just sitting beside me here. So let's see if he warms up a little bit and then actually gets into the camera. But I've got Zeus with me here. But yeah, it is, it's the 6th of October, uh, NRL Grand Final, uh, Penrith Panthers versus Melbourne Storm. So uh, being a Melbourne boy, I have to say, uh, go Melbourne, but we'll go to Storm. But uh, we'll see how we go. I don't know if it's still going or not. I don't know if it's finished or if it's still going. But um, yeah, it might be a very quiet night. But yeah, once again, thank you to everyone that has decided to join. Um, we've got a few people on here. Hayley Murphy, Nielsey, Proscope Earthworks, uh, Laura, what is that? Laura Malex, is it? Uh, Paul Camo. We've got a few up here. On, even on TikTok, we've got Austin, Connor, Christian, Jim, got a whole bunch of guys on here. So thank you very much for everyone that has uh, decided to to uh, make the evening and join us. Um, now, first things first, you can see I'm wearing a Earthworks Hub hat. So these caps are now available on the store. So if you go to earthworkshub.com.au, all these caps are available. Uh, you've got the cap like this, which is like the um, baseball style. Then you've got the flat peak which I've got up here behind me. And then you've got the bucket hats. So uh, like I said once before, I used to bag the bucket hats, but um, working through a few hot summers outside, the bucket hats are actually very, very, uh, very, very um, handy. So make sure you get yourself some of that merch. Moba, thanks for joining. I was just saying it might be a very quiet evening because a lot of people are watching the NRL um, and it's, seems to be a lot of people from interstate are doing that so let's see how the evening goes sydney rockwell's joined as well thank you for joining all right so the merch speaking of merch look what i got hard hat watches have sent me the new hard hat sports edition so uh, i haven't had it i can't get it going hang on i haven't had a good go at it yet so i just got it literally yesterday Pulled it out of the um, delivery bag, and now I'm just I've just charged it and got it uh, on my hand today, and I'm just having a look through it, and um, yeah, it seems pretty decent, man. A little bit different to the uh, first one I got, which was the, the hard hat tradie style, but the uh, sports edition looks very very nice. I will keep you posted on the um, performance of this watch. I reckon um, it's nicer than the other one to look at. Uh, obviously, it being a bit more sporty, it's probably a little bit more sleek. Um, it doesn't have that, that full, you know, steel casing and that around it. So yeah, let's see how it goes. I'm going to give it a good test run this week, uh, and probably put out some posts, but, uh, don't forget if you go onto the Earthworks Hub website, click on hard hat watches. So we are affiliated. You will get yourself a discount if you use my discount code and that is eWorks Hub. So make sure you go on there. If you're going to buy something from them and use that code, get yourself a discount and, They've also asked me to mention Black Friday is coming up, so there's going to be some massive, massive sales there. So keep an eye out on um, hard hat watches um, for the Black Friday sales. Um, thank you as well. We got Bailey McKenzie, UDA Frank, same day driveways. I like that. That's a that's a good business name, man. So uh, make sure you go and check that out. Um, hard hat watches, new listings for the week. So while everyone's still joining in and being notified that we're going live. I'll just go through and announce a couple of the new uh, listings we've had this week. Ashton, how are you? And UDA Frank, you're saying, hi, how are you? I am very good, mate, very good. So this week we've had the Rent Right Equipment uh, Rental Group. Um, they're in Victoria. Uh, Rock Culture, South Australia. Rombus Civil and Landscape. Uh, Mornington Peninsula Sheds. Uh, ADM Civil and Landscape, and we've had Moody Cadell and Partners, which all, also do uh, finance for machinery and equipment, Hick Excavations, JDS Earth Moving Group, um, and then we had another one, which was, let me see if I can find that, I think they were called JD, the JD Group, was it, from Perth? Anyway, there's another one there, but uh, thanks to all those guys that have listed on the website, so well done, guys. If you need to find any um, form of Earthworks-related business, go on to Earthworks Hub and you'll be able to find them on there. 
I can actually see some people have actually started posting that they're available for work on there as well. So if you go to the jobs section, you can find people that are looking for work. So if you need a worker, go onto that section. If you're um, if you want to advertise for a worker, you can also go on there and advertise, um, and it's all free. So just go in there and have a look. Now, don't forget all these Sunday live sessions. I do post them up during the week, so they'll go out onto Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcast. So if you do miss something or you have to leave or you come in halfway through and you want to hear if you miss something, you can go and find those. On YouTube, you'll have the audio and video version as well, yeah? So you can check out uh, both depending on how you want to listen to them. A quick shout out to my sponsors. So the first one being the Bolle Group. So thank you for gifting this uh, jumper to me. I actually did a little bit of uh, excavation work for these guys recently, so they gave me one of these to wear while I was there and also to wear on the show. So thank you to the Bolle Group, Network Finance, uh, Melbourne Tractors, Spartan Machinery, um, Next Gen Landscapes and um, Earthworks, uh, JR Safety Co, Diggerlid. So don't forget, Diggerlid, I also have an affiliation with them, so use the code EWORKSHUB if you want to get yourself a bit of a discount uh, on their website. Uh, and people have been using it, so I've already seen on there because I do get a report uh, saying that people are buying, and they are. People are using the code and getting discounts. So congrats to those guys. I uh, hope you're enjoying their products too, yeah. So you're, I've also got Digger, Goddings, and Earth Moving Warehouse. So thank you to all my sponsors for your help. And Hard Hat Watchers, like I said earlier, I'll give you a bit of a, a feedback on this during the week on the new sports version. But um, in the meantime, yeah, go check it out from the website. Click on hard hat watches and it'll take you through and you can use eWorks Hub to get yourself a discount. Uh, what else? So during the week, so I had a big week, I did the final inspection on um, Project Spalding. So we finished everything, landscaping, gar- uh, all the gardening, grass at the front, um, I put in all the trees. So you wouldn't believe how fussy the councils are. Now you've got to actually put in the exact amount of trees that they want, the exact... Um, the exact, uh, what do you want to call it, not breed or whatever, the the type of plant that they want and all this sort of jazz. So I did all that and then had the final inspector come in and check everything. He did pick a couple of little things, so I've got to put a couple of little extra exit stickers and things up on the wall and I had to put a fan in one of the other rooms and basically that will be done this week and then it's done. So I'll get my occupancy certificate and then it's that's it. The warehouse is done and ready to go. So um, keep an eye out for that. I posted a couple of pictures up of the finished product. What what are your what's your feedback, guys? A lot of people say that it looks really good. Um, I reckon it's come out fantastic, man. I reckon it's really really come out well. Um, I did try and make it look really um, nice and clean and stand out. And I was a bit worried about the color choice. Um, I did a monument gray or black, whatever you monument gray. And I did a um, a little light gray color with it. So it came out good. I think it really came out. Um, and it stands out. When you drive past, a lot of people um, stop and have a look. Peter is saying you're loving the new setup. Thank you very much, Pete. Thanks for the positive feedback. So that's it. So yeah, this week, that's all I really got to do. I was focused, so focused on trying to finish that warehouse and get, get it ready for the final inspection that I didn't get a chance to do much else. So um, yeah, that's basically it. The warehouse will be done. What am I going to do with myself afterwards? Stewie! Sending the uh, on fire and love hearts. Thank you very much. On great civils also joined, as well as Cooper, Pratt's Earthworks. Everyone's joining. Thank you, guys. I know a lot of people were watching the uh, NRL, so I was wondering whether it would be a really small turnout. But uh, it seems to be increasing. So, yeah. Beers with Pete. That's it. (laughs) Actually, do make sure that you've got yourself ready for the evening. This is what I'm going to do just to celebrate. So, Godding, thank you for joining and Mr. Excavator. So yeah, just cheers to Project Spalding being complete, subject to a couple of little things that the final inspector picked up, but um, basically done. Ah, beautiful Sunday night. Yeah, what am I going to do with myself? Now that I've finished the warehouse, um, I'm, I've been so flat out with it that I'm not used to actually not having that much to do, so I'll have to start another project now. We'll f- figure something out. We'll figure it out. Actually, speaking of that, I've got a couple of ideas, and I want to I want to run it past everyone on here and see your opinions. So, one, we want to do a demo day 
and there's already been a bit of interest in this where I come where we can have a few different types of machines on site uh, perhaps have some GPS on there we've already had people like MOBA um, suggest that they'd be happy to come on and we've had a whole bunch of people throw some ideas out there and we I'm actually thinking about going ahead with it so I'm looking for um, a site where we can do that so we are going to need somewhere with a bit of space in Melbourne somewhere with a bit of space where we can actually you know move machines around and and try out GPS on on machinery live in person there and give people a bit of a go so we are going to need somewhere with a bit of dirt that we can move around um, not too far from sort of central Melbourne so that way everyone can join us uh, a couple of people have off offered you know a bit more regional but I think we need to keep it more central so we are really I'm actually thinking we should do it man so it'll be a dig day demo day whatever you want to call it some people have said the uh, hubcon to call it the hubcon 24 um, you never know you never know it could could turn out to be a big day and then I might, might invite a couple of other um, even some of my sponsors and other other machinery brands that to come and bring some of the machines down so people can try them out and have a look so I'm thinking about doing something. I think we really should look at it. So I uh, started off as a bit of a joke, but I think we actually really need to, to do it. So I'll pull the trigger on that one hopefully soon. Keep I'll keep you posted. If you've got some ideas on a location, what you want to see on there, the best way to advertise on it, whatever, whatever ideas you got, or if you think you know you, you can suggest um, something that we should do on there that others haven't done on their expos, let me know. It might, it might turn into something big. So um, I'm keen to... Keen to hear your opinions. Uh, the other thing is, and you've probably seen there's heaps of these guys selling these raffle tickets for cars, heaps for cars. <laughs> Peter saying bring in the chev apps. That's exactly what I said last time as well. So uh, yeah, it'd be a good idea to have them there. If you haven't tried chev apps, guys, they're a Balkan uh, skinless sausage, the best tasting um, thing you'll ever have. Um, I'll, I'll actually, I'll have to have them there. If we do have it, we're going to have to balkanize it a bit. Um, yeah, the other thing I was going to say is I'm really thinking about doing one of those little raffles and doing a giveaway. So, you know, like you see all these guys with their cars. There's another company that's doing it for uh, a small excavator at the moment. But I'm thinking of doing something small, maybe like, you know, talking to some of my sponsors to see if they want to um, bring in something like, you know, I don't know, something small, man, not, not, like a, not like a machine straight away. And then doing like a bit of a raffle to see how it goes. Does anyone or does everyone think? What do you guys think of that idea? Do you think it would work? Do you think I should? Um, do you think it's already been like overdone? There's already too much, too much of that. Or do you reckon there's still, still um, something left in it? Because uh, if there is, I'm happy to do it. So for all Earthworks Hub members, you know, you, you can get yourself a ticket, buy yourself a ticket like a raffle ticket for this certain product or whatever it is, or um, attachment, and then. Um, we we do a raffle at the end of the month or something. So if any, if if it shows a bit of interest, I would be keen on doing something like that. So um, yeah, give me some ideas on that as well. If there's something in particular, like an attachment or a product that you recommend, I should um I should put up for raffle. Or if you've got something you want to donate or something something you want to talk to me about, an idea, hit me up as well. Yeah. So I'm open to suggestions. So I'm trying to do things now that I'm going to have Project Spalding out of the way. Um, I will have some other things happening, so I can't really uh, say too much, but I will have some other stuff happening, but I will also have a bit more time to focus on this stuff, and I really think we can we can expand and go big, so this is what, uh, oh, here we go, so Deodoro Ted is saying, raffle of a nice grease gun, a box of grease, and maybe a fuel pod, that's what I mean, man, that's very good, that is very good, well said, that's what I was thinking, so I don't, I don't want to do big things like machines and all that, look, maybe it might get that far later, but just small things that people need, people that in our industry need, because not everyone will want the machine, you know, but people will need like grease guns and, you know, like whackers and, and DPUs and, you know, just all like smaller stuff, generators, grease guns, yeah, like fuel pods. I think they're things that guys will actually need and use. Jodes has joined on TikTok. Thank you for joining, Jodes. Yeah, so I think, yeah, Deodoro Ted, I reckon that's a good idea, man. So... Maybe I can talk to some of my sponsors if they're on here or talk to anyone else that's interested or has products they can offer and you're, and you're keen to do something, let me know and maybe I'll do it. So if um, you guys think something like that will work, I will definitely look into it. Uh, and like I was saying earlier, if if um, 
if people are interested in doing you know, more stuff on that expo, let me know as well. <clears throat> and also, on that note, don't forget to subscribe on all the uh, platforms. So I'm on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Uh, I don't know, whatever whatever else. There's a whole bunch there. I can't even remember all of them. And go onto the website, www.earthworkshub.com.au and register yourself on there. So that way you are become a member that's free to register. And that way I can also send you out information when things come up. Um, oh, Pete has got to go. No worries, Pete. Thanks for joining, man. Don't forget the Chevap idea. I like it. I like it. So yeah, that's basically all the uh, formal stuff done. Uh, topics, I didn't actually want to prepare anything in particular this evening. I wanted to see and leave it open to you guys. So um, I can see some questions already on TikTok. So I might go to those and answer. Um, but yeah, if you want, think of some questions while I'm asking other ones and answering them. But um, I'm going to leave it to you guys tonight because I often talk about a topic. I thought I'll leave it open and let you guys ask. So make sure, make sure you use this time wisely and, and ask me. So Rama is saying, do you guys have much work at the moment? Rama, in Melbourne, it is still very, very quiet. Um, it hasn't really picked up. I did notice I got a couple of ex um, texts from agencies this week, which I haven't had for a very, very long time. So maybe there's a bit of work starting to come up. A lot of my mates are starting to win projects. I've had a few phone calls for little jobs. Actually, I just remembered I've got a small one I didn't quote. I was supposed to call him this week and I haven't done it. Now I'm going to be one of those tradies that they talk about and say, oh, he never gets back to me. That's going to be me this week. Actually, I've got a little job I've got to go and quote. So um, if you're watching me, I've, I haven't forgotten. I just haven't had a chance. But I will come out and do your quote soon. So yes, yeah, I am getting more uh, inquiries. I'm <clears throat> getting, getting people to, um, getting more and more people inquiring and asking for quotes and that again. But it's nowhere near like it used to be. Yeah, it's still very, very quiet, Rama. And Rama's saying, I'm just looking for weekend work, that's all. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so he, he's obviously asking to see if there's any work for the weekends. Yeah, at the moment, it's not very, very, not very busy, man. Like, I've been lucky that this Project Spalding's had me sort of going. Um, and then I've been working for my mates in between here and there and doing other stuff. But yeah, very, still very, very quiet. Very, very quiet. Hey, look, it is getting warmer. The days are getting longer. Um, you know, people have gone gotten through the tax period and that. So maybe now it'll start to pick up again. But um, we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. I've got my co-host here, Zeus, but you guys can't see him because he's bloody lying down. I thought he was going to... Usually he lays in my lap, but this time he's laying down there. Today we had some bad... Uh, we actually had a bad morning because... Um, I don't know if it's what if it's what I think it is, but the only thing I've changed at this house is on a few days ago we finished doing the rollout turf at Project Spalding, and whatever was left of the turf, we had um, the buffalo grass. Whatever was left, I brought it back home, and then we laid some in the backyard because I thought, oh, well, we'll just bring it there and I'll start putting some grass in the back. So that's the only thing I've really changed in the last few days. And this morning he broke out in m a massive rash. He had lumps all over him, all over his face. He was all pink everywhere, under his arms and that. And um, I got really worried. And my wife went to go wash him in the in the shower because uh, we usually use the hose in the shower. And he looked really bad. His eyes were all uh, bloodshot. So we called um, the vet and said, you know, what, this is what's happening. They said, no, no, bring him in. It could be a, a allergic reaction or something. So... We took him in and they, they, they were asking us, what have you changed? And my wife said, the only thing we've really changed is we just put in some rollout turf in the back that was left over from a job. And they said, well, that, he could be allergic to that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But the poor thing had an allergic reaction to something, broke out in hives, and they gave him a couple of shots. And it seems to have calmed him down. But um, now he's like, he's fallen asleep over here on, my, on the side. He can't really see him. Um, oh, Jack Healy's joined. How you going, Jacko? Oh, this is going down very nice tonight, I'll tell you what. Yeah, and then uh, what else did I do? Today I actually spent a bit of time giving my car some TLC. The LC Tirana, I don't know if you guys seen it when I was showing the studio, but I've got an LC Tirana two-door coupe. 
and it used to squeak every time I pressed the brakes. It would squeal, squeal that loud. Everybody used to turn around. I used to hate driving this thing. And you turn up somewhere and it squeals as soon as you press the brakes and everyone turns around and thinks, look at this hunk of junk, just because of the noise. So um, I found, after doing a bit of research on Google, thank God for Google, that you can buy these shims and you just put the shims in between the um, pads and the, and the um, cylinder and it actually worked. I put them in, took it for a drive today and it ran, no, no squealing, no nothing. So for the sake of these little $50 shims, I've saved myself. I should have done it ages ago. I wish I knew about it earlier. But yeah, it was embarrassing. You turn up in this nice car and it squeals and everyone just turns around to see what it is. And automatically, it makes you feel like your car's a piece of crap. So um, yeah, if anyone's got that issue with their car, try a set of shims on your um, on your pads. Well, on, on disc pads. Because um, apparently they all have it when they come out. But then people change the pads over and throw the shims out. And then that's what happens as a result. It gets noisy. So, yeah, I've got JPG on here. Hello. Cole Young. A Doug 01. Thank you for joining. TikTokers as well. There's a few people on here with no names. Uh, it just says user. It always pins me out when they say that. Hooper Contracting. Hooper T Contracting. Hello. Thanks for joining. All right. So, I will open it up to you guys. Yeah. What have you got? What questions? Ask anything, whether it's it's earthworks related or just whatever, anything in general, I'm happy to help. Does anyone know, has the rugby finished or is it still going? And well, what are the scores? Does anyone, can anyone let me know? Because um, I can't see it anywhere. I could log in and have a look on the computer, but I don't want to do that while you're on here. Uh, we've got Braden, Yovan, Rajesh, who else is there? Kane, Kane, there's a lot of people here on TikTok. We got Doug with a GQ. Must have a GQ. Oh, dude with a GQ. You must have a GQ. Is that a patrol, yeah? Hmm. So, yeah, this week, I don't know what's happening, man. I haven't actually organized any work for this week. Um, it is still very quiet in Melbourne. So, I was supposed to go and dig out um, some footings and stuff this week for a job, but I think they've already done that on the weekend. Ah, so, Mr. Jovan's asking, are you busy? We just had that question from Rama. There you go. Yeah, a couple of minutes ago, somebody asked the same question, and I was just saying that, no, it's still, in Melbourne anyway, I can only vouch for Melbourne at the moment, but it's still very, very be- uh, quiet. Yeah, there's not much going on. Uh, people are winning work slowly, and I was saying that there's a couple of people ringing to ask for quotes, only small jobs, like little front yards and stuff, um, but there's not much going on. It's still, still very, very quiet. Work-wise, yeah, like it's not not anywhere like it used to be. So yeah, so yeah, Mitchell Anderson is saying there's still heaps of work in Sydney, and I have I've heard that from other people as well. So um, look, it must be yeah, just uh, state dependent, because people in Brisbane were saying they were still busy. Um, there's a few people on here I know from up that way, so they can probably vouch for their end. But um, I heard they were still busy. WA seemed to have been busy as well. And Adelaide, apparently, at one stage, I was saying was going off. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just Melbourne at the moment. But, um, yeah, it is. It's still still very um, still very quiet, man. So, Jovan's saying, have you used High Pages for work? I haven't used High Pages, man. To be honest, I haven't really advertised anywhere. Um, the only thing I did now was I put Eagle One on my website. Blessos. Blessos has joined. Blessos Earthworks. Hey, mate. Made it tonight. Yes. Thank you, Blessos, for joining yeah, so uh, I haven't used High Pages. I know some people that have used it, and they've won some work out of it. They reckon it's not bad, um, but you know I get mixed opinions. Some people say that it's not good. Some say that it's good. I don't know, but I I haven't used High Pages personally. Um, so yeah, F. There's a person called F. F is asking, do you own a boat? No, I do not own a boat. Um, I'm not much of a a water man. I do go swimming and that, but. Boats tend to make me sick. Yeah, I don't really um I don't really like being on boats too much. I get boat sick very, very easy. Um yeah, I can tell you some stories about that. We've we've been on a few boats and um it never really turned out too well. So uh yeah, I've even actually been invited recently to go on the boat trip with some guys and I was like, I'd love to go. Sounds like fun, but I don't know, I don't know if I'd last. I reckon I'd be really, really sick. So yeah, all well, my dogs heard something. His ears have perked up. Zeus, come up here. Come here. 
And he still still uh, doesn't want want to put his face on the camera. Oh, a bit camera shy. Bless those, yeah. Thank you for joining. So yeah, no, I do not own a boat, uh, and I haven't used High Pages. Like I said, I've only used really my website, and I have had a few calls out of that. Um, actually, the one that um, asked me to quote this week, he actually came in from the web from the website. So if you haven't advertised and you're asking because you want to advertise, um, yeah, go on to earthworkshub.com.au. You can advertise your business on there, list it on, and people might find you and use your services, man. So I've I've got a few calls out of it. Um, ooh, next gen civil. Hello, day day in a way, is it? Next gen civil. Yeah, the boys. <laughs> That's it. Um, what have we got? So I've got here. Oh, bless those is saying. Uh, no, it's back. It's back. I think it's back. Can everyone? Can everyone hear me on Instagram? I just lost everyone. Morgs. Hello, Morgs on TikTok. Um. Your one's asking, recommend they shop for excavator tracks in Melbourne. Ah, I can tell you who to go to. They're in Thomastown. Um, oh, gosh, what's the name? They're in Thomastown. I'll think of the name for you. That's where I always go and get my tracks. Um, they're, what was their name? IT, ITR. Yeah, ITR in Thomastown in Melbourne. If you need some rubber tracks, go there and see ITR. They're good, man. Very, very good. And they, they last very, a very, uh, very long time as well. So, sorry, going back to your question before, Blessos is saying that he's used high pages in the past and they're not too bad. He actually had a few jobs and he says uh, he's he's used iSeq plant as well. Holland Earthworks. Oh, TKV, I think, in Hallam. So, UDA Frank is recommending TKV in Hallam. So, I have used TKV in the past as well, um, but then I just moved over to ITR because they were closer and, and I think the price might have been a little bit more competitive. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, they're, they're the guys I would recommend. So, yes, uh, yeah, well, Holland Earthworks is saying what's happening, legend. It's all happening here. We're uh, celebrating a Sunday evening. We've all uh, finished the week and now starting a new week. So, yes, having a few drinks to celebrate um, Project Spalding has been completed. So, yeah. Bottoms up to that. Um yeah, so UDA Frank, you're saying the prices have changed a lot in the last few years. Yeah, so I think you're still talking about tracks there, hopefully. Um, who is this? I can't read it. Your, your nan, your nan's a dealer. I like that. These people on TikTok have TikTok have got crazy names, man. Your nan's a dealer is saying public holiday tomorrow. Uh, no, no public holiday here in Melbourne, unless there's one maybe in the other states. I'm not sure. But we had we had our grand final AFL grand final day off um, last last a few weeks ago actually. Holland Earthworks is saying top job, mate. Thank you for the positive feedback. Uh, Ferguson saying he swapped to Insta. That's good, man. A lot of people do swap over after a while. Um, and Bless as you're saying, looks awesome, mate. Well done. Ah, uh, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, it took it took a fair bit, man, doing to do that. And I'm happy. I'm happy with the result. Very very happy. Uh, Ferguson saying, would it, would you say it's worth to get a job in Earthworks now? So Ferguson saying, is it worth getting a job in Earthworks now? You know what? It's a very, very quiet period. Um, unless you go for a company where they have a lot of work and continuous work in at this stage, you're going to struggle because you might get put on somewhere and then they might discover that it's too much for them to have you on so they get rid of your... You might go somewhere and then they say, oh, you know, we've got another more experienced person coming in, so they, you know, they trade trade you for someone else. It might be a very, very hard period, especially if you haven't been in it um, until now and you're just starting. It might be very hard because everybody will want an experienced operator and there's plenty of operators looking for work or experienced operators looking for work at the moment. So I said this last week or the week before, a mate of mine advertised uh, looking for an operator and he had over a hundred applications um, here in Melbourne. So there's obvious, and a lot of them are highly experienced guys. So there's a lot of um, people looking for work. So I'd say um, moving jobs now or starting out fresh, and that you're just going to be very, very weary. I, I don't know how it's going to be because uh, it is still a bit quiet. Uh, UDA Frank is saying, "Yeah, I remember paying four fifty a track for a one point eight tonner, and not anymore. Now they're about seven fifty or more." Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's a lot, man. The focus and saying, "Holy shit!" Yeah, but um, yeah, that's um, that it's it's a lot of money, man. Yeah, so look, these don't forget these are obviously they're not they're aftermarket um rubber tracks. So you know, if you went to go and get um OEM or original um tracks, yeah, you're gonna obviously pay you know double that or triple. So they're still cheap when you look at the overall cost for a, a pair of originals. Emil, how you going, Emil? Emil's joined us. Um, Ferguson two three seven is saying, "What do you think of about Kubota?" Look, Kubota are a, an awesome brand. Um, look, Goddings are one of my sponsors, and that's because I also had a lot of Kubota excavators. So, I've had anything from the one point seven all the way up to their five and a half ton machine. I've had their Posi tracks, and and I think they're good. They're good, good, reliable, powerful machines. Um, parts are, um on hand. You can. You can um, easily find parts for them. And obviously they're good when you think about it. Why do a lot of machines, like other brand names, use Kubota motors and Kubota parts? There's a reason for that. So they must be they must be doing something right. So a lot of these other brands are using Kubota engines. So that just tells you um, how reliable the motors are if they're if they're opting for that. You know what I mean? So I think they're I think they're a good good overall brand. And I can only say that I've had no dramas or anything since having Kubotas. So I've had a lot of different brands, but um, I did have more Kubotas than, than any other one. And um, yeah, the reason is that they were, um, you got good value for money. They were, like I said, reliable. Whenever I needed something repaired, they had parts on hand. Somebody came out and fixed it. And they um, also were like very, very helpful. So the Goddings as a dealership were very helpful with me, always keeping me in the loop. So that's why um, I continued with them. Um, oh, bless as you're saying, he had a go in a 265 posi last week. What did you think? Let me know. Um, and then Brody's asking what I think about cat. Oh my gosh, here we go. There's too many, there's too, too many, um, questions coming at once. UDA is saying you're a full Aussie. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an Aussie wog. I'm, I'm a European Aussie, mate. Got a bit of a, bit of a Balkan background as well. So, uh, I do, I do have the Aussie accent, a bit of an Aussie European accent. Um, UDA Frank is saying he had them for the last 30 years never had a problem good machines oh there you go so he's always, always UDA Frank obviously has had good experiences with them a, somebody is saying on grade on grade 135 hey Ivan I haven't been in this live for a while that's true man you haven't been on here for a while good to see you again good to see you um, so yeah that's it man I uh, I think about is a, a good machine overall Cats, Brody's asking about a cat. I think cats are good too. So I've I've had a, a cat posi track. Very, very happy with that as well. Comfortable, also very reliable and very quick to respond. So I've had them come out and fix my machines. I've also floated machines back to them and had them repaired. And they've always been very, very helpful. So cat really, um, I can't say anything bad about them. I have to even admit that uh, at one stage I was going to buy some more cat equipment and then I didn't do it. And then sometimes I think I should have because um, if if you look at it, my cat actually, I'll tell you what, if you look at resale value, the cat did really well in resale. So I believe that must be the, it must be something that happens with all their machines. So my cat posi track, I, I, I sold it for only a little bit less than what I bought it for and I had it for... Um, man, what 2017 till till only recently, so man, like at least six, seven years, whatever I had it, and I still only sold it for just a bit less than what I paid. So um, yeah, I think you just get your good resale on it. So Holland Earthworks is saying, yeah, Cat would have to be the best in his opinion uh, for on-hand parts. They do, they do have a lot of parts, and it's good how they've got their codes all their barcode system and that, so you can just take a part there to them and give them the barcode and then they know exactly what it is. So on grades talking about the Cat 255 on TikTok and then uh, Bless is saying he used the 265 and he's saying that the, it's the best machine ever, so much new stuff, heaps more power, um, leaps and bounds in front of anyone else. Yeah, there you go. So um, Bless is agreeing with you on grade. I think um, they are. Like I have to admit, my um, the two three nine D I had the Cat two three nine D very very um, comfortable, had just enough power to do what I wanted it to do. So I really probably wanted a two five nine, but I ended up getting a two three nine. 
Um, and that was because I had no stock of the 259 back then. And that one was there, ready to go. And I sat in and I thought, ah, oh, stuff it, man. I'll just get it. It's here. I could take it straight away. Um, and it was good. It did all right. I have to say it was good. Sometimes I wish I had the 259 back then. I wish I had just that little bit more grunt, probably a bit more height or whatever it had, you know, a few other different options. But it did all right. The 239 still lasted me all that time, and I did everything with it that I did with any other posi. So it was still very good, and it was comfortable, and the aircon always worked and everything. So um, one thing with the posi tracks, just remember to always blow out the um, aircon filters in that, man, because a lot of people don't do it, and they don't realize that that's slowly blocking your whole internal pressure and then you're breathing all that crap in so make sure that you're, you're constantly getting because the posi tracks create a lot of dust in that yeah so and it all goes up into the all goes up into the um aircon filters and then it blocks it and then you're not really getting fresh air so make sure you always blow them out man so i'm not talking about your air filters i'm talking about the aircon the cabin filters yeah um yeah and on great saying especially if you do topsoil daily yeah that's so true Eco's joined as well. Thank you. So yeah, if you're especially if you're in dusty conditions, you make sure you blow them out daily, man. Even if it's really dusty, it's like fine topsoil. You, you got to blow it out more often because uh, it does. It clogs up, and then you don't have that nice cabin pressure. You, you're breathing crap in, and it doesn't work well, man. Um, and then also your your aircon, you know, the aircon radiators, whatever you want to call them. Make sure you blow those out as well, man, and high pressure them every now and then. So somebody told me, a guy came out from CAT once and he said when he lifted my cab, he said underneath, do you know that you're supposed to open up that little black um, box under the seat, which is under when you lift the cab, it's under the seat. And he said, you know, you should really open that up and blow it out or, or high pressure it every now and then because that's your actual aircon sort of radiator. And he said, if, if that gets clogged, that's just not going to work. Nothing's going to work properly. And I was like... I only found that out like after five years of owning it. <laughs> Didn't even know you could you could take that little black box off and 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 um, get access in there. So uh, yeah, make sure you do clean out you clean out your um, filters and your radiators and that definitely. Um, New Zealand digger saying don't need to. We have an open cab. Oh man, I had an open cab. I had a Terex PT60, and uh, after having that and doing topsoil and stuff with it. I don't know if I'd ever have a... Oh, hang on a second. I skipped some questions here. Um, hang on a second. Yeah, so uh, sorry, I didn't realize I clicked on someone's comment before and then it stopped and it wasn't showing me all the new ones and then there's so many more afterwards. Yeah, so yeah, the, definitely I had, I had an open cab and I really don't think I'd ever have an open cab again, man. Like recently, um, Bolly was asking me to jump in their, in their Kubota SVL 75 and their window is stuck open. And I jumped in there to go and do some stuff and automatically all the dust was coming in and I hated it. It reminded me of the PT-60 and um, I just think about all the dust that I ingested when I was using that thing. I remember, I've got photos somewhere. Bless those, thanks for that. I haven't left to check out uh, mine under the cab. Yeah, that's it. They definitely open up the cab and you'll see the black thing that, that it's like a black um, plastic box with some clips on it. You undo the clips and then you can actually um, you can blow out the filter under there, which I never knew, man. I only, I only found out just before I sold it. Yeah, you got a PT50. So, yeah. So, um, NZ Digger is saying that they've got a PT50. So, I had the PT60. Awesome machine, man. I loved it. But open cab just killed me, man. Yeah, the the open cab was just... Um, you end up like a raccoon. So, if I used to wear sunglasses... And then uh, at the end of the day, I'd take my glasses off. I'd look like a raccoon, just wide eyes. And the rest of me was just um, blocked. And then I thought I'd be um, smart. And my, one of my operators and myself, we put um, clear perspex and attached it to the sides of the cage. So that way, when it rained, it wouldn't come in from the sides and you wouldn't get wind coming through. But then it just made it really hot. And we we're going to make a door ourselves as well. Out of, the, out of Perspex, and then I was like, imagine how hot it would be in there when that closes, it'd be just crazy, because there's no aircon. So yeah, Manic Mechanic is saying, yeah, it'd be like driving an open cab, oops, holy shit, nearly broke this. Um, I'm getting too excited. Manic Mechanic is saying it like driving an open cab tractor, plowing, yeah, that's exactly what it's like, man. So yeah, I remember when I had that smudge bar on, and I'm pushing to with the open cab, it'd be just going, whoo, coming straight through. Actually, I had another open cab before that one. I had a RC30, which is like the PT30, the small one. And uh, that was the same, man. Plus, it was noisy as. 
So I'll be deaf half the time. Even with earmuffs on, you'd be deaf. And the RC30 was small and really quick. And I remember I used to get dizzy. I used to make myself sick in that thing. I used to go like from a front yard to a backyard down the side of the house, flying, turn it around, pick up dirt, take it back out, dump it, turn it around, go back. And I used to get myself dizzy. I remember a few times I used to stop and say, whoa, I'm going to have a, a breather because I'm just like spinning around that little thing. It was so powerful and fast. But then, yeah, as you stop and get out, you're just covered in dust, man, all the time. Covered in dust. And then, you know, when you go lift up to load up a truck, you might lift up some dirt or a crushed rock and then a little bit spills out over the bucket and it all comes in over your legs. And then those days when it used to rain, I forgot about that. When it used to rain, I used to wear have um, wet weather pants for all my workers and wet weather pants in the truck. You know, like those plastic type of pants that you put pull over yours. And I used to give that to the guys and then... We used to put those on and it'd be pouring rain and you're trying to work and it's all your knees. So everywhere from halfway down your lap forward is just fully soaked. Your boots are all soaked and that because you're trying to make the most of it and keep working. Yeah, I forgot, man. Never again, open cab. Never again. Not in the posi track anyway. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you guys got me running off on a tangent on that one. But um, yeah, I think <laughs> Manic Mechanic is laughing. Yeah, I don't think I'd have an open cab um, posi track again. With the excavators, it's probably a bit different because you're sort of sitting still. However, like even recently, I did a job on a 1.7 uh, Wackenusen. I don't know if you guys watched that video I put out. But uh, on the Wackenusen, it was open cab and then it started to get windy um, a couple of hours into the job. And I remember turning a few times to load up a trailer and as I lifted the bucket, all the dirt flew back at, at me straight in the eyes, straight in the face. Yeah, that was... Um, a reminder of why I don't like open cabs. Oh, Ferguson, I've got a bit of Jamison here, man. Terra Pro, thanks for joining as well. Yeah, a uh, bit of Jamison, man. Very, very good. Very good for a Sunday night. Can't go wrong with the Jamison. That's always my backup, man. That and Monkey Shoulder. There's a couple of other ones I like. They're just my backups I always have in the background. I finished all the Hennessy. That's all gone. I finished all the uh, Diplomatico rum. That's all gone. I've gone through the collection. I've got to. I've got to um, go and top and top up again. Mmm. A bit of Jamo, and you get the one liter bottles. Good value for money, man. You pay only a little bit more, and you get the one liter one. It even works out better. Anyhow, not that I'm promoting drinking, but just uh, every now and then you got to have a bit of relaxed time. Ah, uh, that's here. Any grappa. Well, actually, we just finished that too. Everything goes here, man. Doesn't nothing last very long, Fergo? Nothing, nothing lasts long here. I can tell you that. And the worst thing is, it's not me. It's all my, all my relatives and mates when they come over. They all just go straight to the bar and they just help themselves. Everything goes. Yeah, I don't mind a bit of Johnny Green. Very, very good. Very, very good. Yeah, it is. And Dimples, all right too. Yeah, it is. Hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> Manic Mechanic is saying hundred percent. Yeah, it's all it's everybody else that comes. Even when I go and um even when I go and buy buy more, my wife will be like, Why are you buying more? We've got so much. I'm like, it's not for me, it's for everybody else because I know they're all gonna come and just go in there and help themselves and then that's it, it's all gone. Then when I do want it, it's it's nothing there for me. Ooh, Ferguson's saying he's gotta go, but he's saying, Ooh, a bit of advice there. Try dimple with an espresso shot. I will have to do that. That that'd be Almost like a um, espresso martini, maybe something like that, similar. We'll have to give that one a go. And on grade one three five is saying black label. Even black label, man, it is. It's underrated. The Johnny Walker black label. People think, um, you know, ah, oh, they're they're rubbish and that. But look, the red. I would say the red is what we what we had when we were like fifteen to eighteen, when you couldn't afford much and you just have one just to get smashed. You just go get the Johnny red. But um, now, if I smell, I'll, I'll be just sick, man. It would just bring back too many too many memories. So no Johnny Red for me. That's what we use now. You know what I use the Johnny Red for? We have a bottle of that in the house. That is used for cleaning jewelry, cleaning their nose rings, earrings and stuff when you're putting them back in. Cleaning, um, if you get a cut or something, we use Johnny Walker Red for that. Um, if you've got a bit of a rash or something, we dab a bit of that on there. Yeah, you cut yourself or something. That's all it's good for, man, at the moment. So um, yeah, I'm moving up in the world, getting too fussy. But uh, Johnny Red's not not for drinking anymore. Anyway, enough about that. Fine line excavations. Thank you for joining. 
I'll have to give that dimple a bit of a go. So, yeah, it's been a while since I had that. Uh, what else, guys? Yeah, we went a little bit off track there. We were talking about drinks, but um, what else do you guys want to talk about? Does anyone know the rugby? No one's got back to me on that. Is the rugby still going? Who won? What are the scores? Is it, is it still going? Uh, nobody has said anything. Um, it'd be very interesting to see. What is it? It started at 6.30, so surely it'd be close. Surely it should be close to finished or, or finished already. If you just joined or you haven't, weren't here earlier on, we were talking about doing a raffle. So um, I want to hear your opinions on that too. So I am actually really debating on doing a, a raffle and getting some sort of a prize where we all um, buy tickets and that and then, and then get do a little like a presentation. So similar to what all those other guys do with the cars and stuff. But if you um, have any ideas, let me know. Or if you think it's a bad idea, tell me, and then I'll have to really think about it. But um, most people seem to be keen about it earlier. So if you've just joined, also give me your opinions on that. Uh, Kiwi in Cairns is saying, <laughs> if New Zealand are playing, they would they would have won. Yeah, true. True, true. Yeah, they are good, they are good to watch, man. Uh, Manic Mechanic is saying, what's the word on future battery-powered excavators? Sorry if asked. Uh, no, that's a... Uh, very relative question, manic mechanic. I actually had a conversation about this with someone recently. Um, what the future is with battery-powered machines, and the guy actually knew a lot more than I thought. He gave me some dates, apparently when they're going to stop. So a lot of companies have already announced, which I have, I have to research that. They've already announced um, dates and years of when, like, not far from now, they're going to stop producing or manufacturing diesel powered machines and they've already got plans in place to to just make them all battery operated so um uh to answer your question i think the future will be battery powered my question was how are they going to charge them on site so just say you're out in on these big civil sites big subdivisions you know you got multiple machines on site different sizes you know graders um what do you call it, uh, dozers, uh, moxies, you got all this equipment on there. How are you going to charge all that? That was my th my question. Like how, you all right, we can all go buy a machine, but how are you going to charge it when it's in the middle of nowhere in the paddock and there's no power there? I suppose the answer will be um, massive power um, banks, like maybe containers with solar power panels all over them or like diesel-powered um, generators, but then it's like, what's the point if the generator's running to to power the batteries? What's the point of having um, batteries? You know, it doesn't doesn't. I don't know it almost doesn't make sense, but I think they're going to have to. Um, I suppose they're going to have to create these massive generators to be able to charge all the machines on site. Because imagine at night everybody stops, parks up their machines, and then they all have to be connected so they can work the next day. Like we have to really. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of um, thought going into it. People are saying so. Brody's saying, yeah, a um, a portable charger. Kiwi and Kansas is saying go nuclear. Um, Brody's saying they're probably diesel jennies. Yeah, I've got a feeling in, that they're going to start with maybe diesel generators. So I suppose then you've only got one diesel um, diesel diesel um, using like something only one machine or one thing using diesel, and then you're going to have all these. Um, machines with like maybe spare batteries on site and then those batteries are going to be on charge overnight or during the day while they're working and they can just change over batteries so i think that would be what i what i imagine would happen and this is what i'm hearing that they're going to have to have these massive like containers that are either either diesel generated or ge diesel generators or they're going to be solar powered and they have to be able to charge all their batteries and then everyone will have to buy machines with spare batteries so this is what i'm hearing I don't know how true that is. Um, if anyone can can answer that, let me know. But um, that's what they're apparently doing. Uh, Manic Mechanic is saying, yeah, nuclear would be smart. TerraPro says, can't see it being there yet. Great for some jobs in built-up areas that are sensitive to sound, but that's all he sees um, they're being used for at the moment. Yeah. Um, but apparently, if they are gonna, if they are already making um, dates on when they're gonna stop producing diesel-powered machines, then there must be something happening. Um. So Brody's saying apparently a diesel Jenny, but yeah, one motor for say five machines 
instead of uh, five motors. So I suppose, yeah, so that means one diesel generator. So what Brody's saying is the same thing I was saying. So that way they've only got one diesel generator using diesel, which will be less than five machines using diesel, and then they all just charge off that machine, so off that generator. So maybe that's what their plan is. But I'm also hearing that, yeah, when you buy machines, you're going to get multiple batteries with it so that you can charge some while you're working and then just quickly move them over. But they're going to need machines on site to move those batteries because batteries are meant to be like weigh heaps. So if that's the case, they're going to have to figure out some way to be able to move those batteries around on site and put them into people's machines. Uh, Terra Pro saying, start buying up diesel diggers and... and uh, and hoard them. Yeah, true, man. Very true. Very, very true. And Cooper's saying, for one machine to do an eight-hour day, it needs to have eight tons worth of batteries. There you go, man. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like, they're going to need massive, like, forklifts or something to try and move these batteries around on site and, and someone to basically load new batteries or fresh batteries into machines to keep them going. Holland Earthworks is saying, enjoy your night, guys. Catch up soon. Holland, thank you very much for joining, man. Good to see you on here. Have a great week. Bless those you're saying, got to go as well. Um, thanks for joining as well. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy your week too, bless those. Looks like people are leaving. Oh, it's nearly nine. That's why. Everyone's starting to leave already. There you go. Man, time has flown. Started off a little bit slow. Like I said, I thought there weren't going to be that many people on because of the uh, rugby. But um, everyone still came on, which is really, really good. And people have really... Um, really jumped on this electric uh, conversation. I like it. Because it is. It's a conversation we need to have. Um, you know, at the moment, they've got charging stations for cars, so you can drive to the station and that. But what about when you're on? What about when you're on site and then there's no no power there? Yeah, so that's that's something they're going to have to think of. Oh, UDA Frank. He just... Tulsa Kings is on. Is that a new series? Because I've seen a lot of ads about that. And I want to I want to see that. I watched all the first um, series. So is this a continuation of the first one, or is this are they repeat? Are they showing a repeat? Let me know because if it is, I'm going to have to get Paramount Plus and go and watch it because um, I really want to see the next the next episodes. Fine line. Thank you for joining, and you have a good night too, man. MM Tippers has joined. UDA Frank, you're a legend. Series two. Yeah, I have to, man. Has it? It's not. Is this the first week of it, or is it actually? Has it actually been out for a while? It's an awesome. It's an awesome series, man. If you guys haven't seen Tulsa King, I like it. When it first came out, the first episode, I was like, eh, it was a bit iffy, and then I got hooked on it. So um, it's a bit like all the other ones too. You know, Sopranos is that. It takes a bit to get hooked. Second week, Frank is saying it's the second week. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to hit him up, man. I might have to. I've, I've got to be careful because I always whinge about um, everyone, all the kids and wife, and they're getting um, Netflix and all the other ones. So if I turn around and say to them, oh, I want Paramount Plus, they're going to lose their crap, man. They're going to lose their shit. So I've got to be careful. I'll have to su- subtly hint that we need Paramount Plus for a few weeks just so I can watch Tulsa King and then get rid of it again. <laughs> Somehow I've got to get it on there. UDA Frank saying Stallone plays the part so well. He does, man. And MM Tippers is saying Stallone still has it. He does, man. He does. He does. He plays the part very well. Um, and Brody saying fuel power in the long run. Yeah, probably, man. Fuel power. Okay. Yeah, true. You never know, man. You never, never know. But I think um, electric is the way they want to go for everything for cars. I know they released end dates for cars as well. So no more manufacturing of, of petrol cars and that. MOBA, thank you for joining this evening. Uh, we'll be speaking very shortly as well, man. Yeah, good. Thanks for joining. Momentum Civil, hello. He's just joined. We're about to wrap it up in a minute, Momentum. Sorry that you've joined close to the end. We've still got a few minutes anyway, so we won't wrap it up straight away. But uh, we've been talking a lot about electric machines at the moment. So if you've got some input on that, let us know. Uh, well, I was just saying my biggest concern with electric is how do they charge the machines all on site when there's no power there so you know you've got no power on site you're you're on a subdivision you're in the paddock, paddock in the middle of nowhere you've got moxies, dozers, graders, excavators all sitting there overnight how do you charge all those machines you know what I mean so that's uh, some questions that we probably need answered 
And then we hit um, a little bit on um, the Tulsa King series, which is um, Sylvester Stallone when he's uh, in in the mob and comes out and gets given a... Ooh. And he gets given, sorry, my TikTok nearly ended then. Oh, I didn't verify properly. Hang on. Man, if you're one millimeter off with their thing, it doesn't work. Um... I meant him saying, sorry, mate, I'll catch up on the episode during the week. Yeah, that's it, man. All these episodes, I do post them all up during the week, so you can listen to them on the podcast while you're working or while you're driving or whatever you like to do. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely listen in. MM Tippers is saying, would EVs be wise to move into at such an early stage? I don't know. I don't know. Look, it is, it is probably going to be the future, and I was saying I've spoken to a few a few people recently and they're saying that apparently a lot of these manufacturers, like big brands that we know, are saying they're going to stop producing um, diesel-powered machines in in the near future. So eventually, yes, we are probably going to go to EV or electric vehicles. But is it too early? Probably yes, because if you think about it, you go on a site now, um, they don't have chargers for you to, to charge. So you're going to have to provide your own charger. So not only will you buy the machine bring it there, then you need to find a way to charge it. If you don't charge it, they're going to say, well, we've got no work for you because that machine needs to be running. I don't know. It might be might be a drum. Then you're going to spend all this money getting a generator there, hoping it doesn't get stolen, You know, trying to charge your machine overnight, letting it run all night with no, no one there. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. Unless, like this other guy was telling me, they're going to give us multiple batteries with every machine, then you can charge one during the day while you're working. I don't know. But then the site will have to incorporate some sort of cost or some way or provide the charger there and maybe charge you for charging there, like charge you, you know, per kilowatt, whatever, for charging on using their generator. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. Manic Mechanic is saying, from what he hears and what he sees, the math does not add up. Yeah, I think at the moment it's still very, very unclear. Like it's still, it's still very open water. There's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of testing is going to have to be done. And I'm hoping that if these manufacturers are saying that, you know, in the near future, they're going to stop manufacturing diesel machines, that they're hopefully they're already ahead and doing all this um, pre-work before that happens. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, man. We'll see how that goes. UDA Frank, enjoy your evening. Thank you for your input as well. Enjoy the uh, Tulsa King don't tell me what happens because I want to. I need to catch up and watch it. I'll have to go now after this and try and get Paramount Plus. I'm pretty sure that's what it's on, yeah. Um, nobody has given rugby scores, so I imagine they're still playing, or no one's really um, uh, watched it. If you have, give us some give us some results. If not, if you don't want to hear it, guys, maybe switch off so you don't hear or move. Don't look at the screen. But um, look, you know what? Everyone's logging off. It's nine o'clock. On the dot. Uh, it's a Sunday evening. I understand a lot of people have got work tomorrow. So I will not hold everyone up. I think we've had a very interesting conversation this evening. Thank you very, very much, guys, for joining. Hopefully you got some good input. Um, MM Tippers is saying, yeah, thanks for the insight. Have a good night. I really appreciate these chats. And I love it. When I see all these guys come on and um, everyone's, you know, like mingling and talking and bringing up topics and that, that's what I want, man. I want our our industry to be a bit more united and people helping each other. So if you've got any questions, hit me up. If you need anything, also hit me up. If I can't help you, I'll find someone that can. We've got a big network here so we can all help each other. Go onto my website, www.earthworkshub.com.au. If you need any information, hopefully I've got it all up there for you. I'll have more and more news on there and and you can you know find businesses if you need someone. So if you need subbies to do jobs for you, Go on the website, use each other's use each other as um you know references and stuff. Uh Terra Pro saying you're the man. Thank you very much, Terra Pro. Um yeah, make sure you go on the site and use each other's services, man. Help each other out. Like I was saying, there's events on there, there's jobs, there's contractors, all types of suppliers. Um and keep adding to it. There's tip sites on there. So if you've got a tip site and you want people to come there and bring material to you, put it on the site as well, man, so that everyone can see you and find you on there. Um, let's help each other out. The industry is already hard enough. Let's make it easier for everyone. 
Uh, also, that make sure that you are following me on all other platforms and watching the videos. This one will be also uploaded this week. And if you've got any more suggestions, even like when I was talking about the little uh, demo days or expos that I'm thinking about doing, or if you've got ideas on that raffle I was talking about, um, yeah, hit me up, send me some messages, and I'll see what I can do. And show your support, buy yourself some merch. Um, and if you do, post it up, man. Show us, show us that you're supporting Put pictures up of yourself. Some of the guys have already been doing that. So thank you to those guys. And um, yeah, like I said, make sure you hit me up if you've got any questions. Enjoy the rest of your week, guys. And I will see you on the next episode. Hopefully by then, my dog will have fully recovered. He can come on as a co-host and not be so camera shy. All right, guys. Have a good one. All the best. See you next time.